Good morning. I'm Ron Brown. I'll be your host today. This is episode 143. It is uh, December the 26th, our last uh, show of 2022. So welcome, everyone. If you are here, um, we welcome you in the audience. If you uh, if you are watching this as a, um, a YouTube replay, well, thank you for watching. And if you're watching this as a YouTube short, just click the link to take you right to the show today. Uh, the show today will be with you for about an hour. And then uh, we'll be uh, having our Q&A followed by our premiere uh, video, which I'll talk about in a minute. Today's show is uh, is our as a sort of a summary of the year. We're going to uh, the most of the show today will be about uh, to see how our our panel of experts that we've assembled will see how expert they are because I've been keeping their predictions for 1920. One and 1922, not so, 2020 or 2020, 2020, 20, 20, 20, yes. And, and yeah. I've been keeping their predictions, and I'm going to play them and see how good they are. So, uh, well, you can either give them the raspberry or give them an applause, but we'll see uh, see how good they're going to be. Uh, then we, of course, we have uh, Ray's music outro, and for our premiere event today, um, we our video. Uh, which I'll be putting, I put it in the link, I'll put it in again. Um, I'm going to, the first uh, a part of the video will be on sending your friends a video link. I've shown you this before, and this is how to how to um, put different links to your uh, videos uh, into an email, different ways you can do that to send it to uh, your friends. Um, I'm going to play a Dewey talk last year about fixed space 5G, and as we move into 2023, Fixed base 5G will be playing a more important role in your communication options for you. So I thought this was a good good fit for 2023. And uh, then uh, Huey is going to talk about a person that doesn't exist. There you go. So uh, he's uh, he's uh, he, it's a really great video. So we have all that all for you, and that will be at uh, half past the uh, <clears throat> half past the hour. Uh, for those of you who are, are looking at my um, uh, the background that I have in my uh, on up on the screen here, uh, this of course is Matt's RV review. Uh, this was the featured um, this was the featured uh, YouTube channel on, on our Saturday newsletter. Uh, many of you <clears throat> I've talked about this before, but I was a full time my wife and I were a full time RVer for many uh, many years, and we traveled around Canada, United States and a 38 foot fifth wheel. Um, <clears throat> so I still have a, uh, my heart still throbs for the open road. Um, and Matt's RV review is a national reviewer and he reviews uh, daily um, RVs, usually for general general RV, but he mostly in the Florida area, but he does, um, he does uh, reviews new RVs because uh, RVs tend to be up and down in, in fluctuating, um, and, and they're sort of going down now and not, a lot, not as many people are buying them. So he started a, a, a new channel for used RVs. And so he'll now be uh, reviewing not only new ones, but used ones. And he has videos coming out daily. He's very entertaining. That's a lot of fun. And I spend too much time watching his videos mm -hmm. anyway. So that's uh, that was the um, <clears throat> in our uh, in our Saturday uh, newsletter, uh, as well as Mike Ungerman's uh, um, um electric uh, EV articles are all there on his playlist. Um, speaking of Mike, he's here today, <laughs> excuse me, and he'll be opening next week with um, uh, our, our first show of the year, of the new year. Excuse me, just a minute, just to clear my throat. Which will focus on batteries while you're clearing your Yeah, so our, our new, um, uh, uh, we will have our first show of 2023. We'll feature Mike and uh, and we'll be talking about EV batteries, right, Mike? Yep. And so that's uh, that's going to be exciting, and that will be uh, will be next week. We will, of course, have um, Tech for Senior live on this coming Thursday. We'll be there this uh, this Thursday, and that's uh, and that's um, that's the plan for this week. Uh, if you if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, please uh, please uh, do so, and it'll keep you updated the point of the newsletter is not so much to give you news of the week but it's more to 
to provide links and and to a very uh, links to all the services that we offer and keep you up to date on what's happening. So let's uh, before we get into doing the reviews, let's uh, let me introduce everybody. Um, Huey, uh, of course, is uh, co-host to uh, to us, and uh, welcome, Huey. And uh, year four, a eh? four fourth year we're moving into, eh? Yeah, uh, another few months. Uh, it was March, I believe, we started. Yeah, and we, we we're going to do it for a couple of months until COVID thing got over with. <laughs> <laughs> and here we still are. Yeah, yeah. So we've got we got a big year planned for you. Lots of fun. We're going to have lots of fun with it. So. Uh, please keep it's your enthusiasm that keeps us going when uh, when nobody comes like well I guess we'll still meet and have coffee once a week hey what the heck right absolutely yeah we, we we'll have, have fun talking to each other so that's right right indeed indeed Bob how are you doing good can you sing us a tune are you uh no 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 my voice is still giving me hassles oh really yep are you getting uh, your water wings ready to travel? Uh, you're going to be off on your cruise pretty soon. Now we got, what, another two weeks to go and we'll be swimming. Yes, indeed. So you're off to, what is it, Hawaii? Hawaii for two weeks. Hawaii. There yep. you go. And you're going out of where? Um, they call it Port Los Angeles. It's actually not Los Angeles. But out of California. Yeah. yeah, correct. Right. And um, Ray, are you um, now you're just recovering? Yeah, I I've, I've, uh, went to a concert a week uh, ago Friday. Oh, yeah. How did that go? Uh, yeah, uh, the concert was good. They they were better than I expected. I thought it would be uh, to, to, to I don't know, I'm not sure how to word it, but the this group was very they call the Duop project and they were right. very authentic. And that that surprised me, and I, and I liked the show. Uh, the only bad thing about it, you might say, is I came home with COVID. Ah, so uh, I'm starting to recover now. And but I wouldn't miss this show even for COVID. <laughs> he did not so. catch it from me. No, no, I just was a concert of about fifteen hundred people in the audience, so it was one of those people. Ah, well, you know that was because I was really impressed with that group because you played the group here and you told us you were going to do the concert, so. That was um, so you enjoyed it. it. Was worth how going? Yes. Well, I don't know about if it was worth it, but <laughs> considering COVID, right? <laughs> you know, many of you don't know, but I, but of course, um, well, you know that I used to live uh, for ten years, lived in Mesa, and Ray really sits in an excellent position in Pine, Arizona, because he he can go down and it doesn't take him that long to get to Phoenix, and you can do all. Uh, all the great things that you know a big city like that has and then you come back up to the to the mountains right or or to to pine yeah i mean no yeah. matter where we live in the in the in the country uh, everybody got pretty much like loves where they live and that's good because i don't want yeah. don't want everybody living in the same place so uh, <laughs> i'm very happy here yeah yeah and it's close and it's close to it's close to phoenix you know you yeah, can yeah. get down to yeah and it's a beautiful it's, drive on the uh, beeline highway yeah, you ought, to, you ought to write a song by the time I get to Phoenix. <laughs> That's a great title. I don't know why I didn't think of that, Huey. <laughs> and of course, Bill, Bill, where are you shoveling snow or what's happening uh, in Oklahoma? No, we're not uh, shoveling snow. We had a little dusting. It's uh, 46 degrees here, but I've been under the weather for the last two days or so, and uh, I don't know what that's all about, but take your COVID it, test. I'm going to take it one right after I get off of here to make sure that I didn't get exposed. But anyway, um, other than that, uh, Christmas was nice. I had uh, dinner with friends mm -hmm. and uh, just had a kind of a quiet, relaxing uh, um, holiday. Great. And Mike, is that your new car? Well, if I wait until 2024, maybe. <laughs> a long list. Long list. <laughs> Indeed. Well, you know, our big, uh, you know, will be when do we get our uh, RAV4 hybrid? So we'll see what happens. Uh, I got an email from the salesman. And he said, uh, have a Merry Christmas. And I said, his, his Christmas present was in the trunk of my new car. And he said, uh, 
he said, oh, he says, I'll have to find it. And I said, yeah, you keep looking and let me know when you get the car, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what see what happens with that. Well, all right. I guess we should get going. We're going to, Bob is going to do a security news update first, and then Huey has a short uh, segment for you, and then we'll get into the predictions. Go ahead, Bob. Here is the Avast Security News Roundup for the week ending December 23rd, 2022. Dear LastPass customer, the headline comes from a notice just sent out by LastPass to all its customers. The email is a reminder that LastPass was recently hacked and urges their customers to get the latest update related to that breach from their blog. I've listed a link. Although the customer's master password is safe, and because of the way LastPass set up their security, that information is not anything that LastPass has or is available for anyone to harvest. However, there was a lot of personal information that was harvested and puts their customers at risk for phishing emails. Keep that fact in mind if you receive anything from LastPass that may be asking for more personal information or fake requests for password resets. Read more on their blog. TikTok's parent company accessed the data of U.S. journalists. Earlier this year, TikTok denied that it had ever been used to target journalists. But now, it has fired employees for tracking the whereabouts of U.S. reporters covering the company. An internal investigation at TikTok parent company ByteDance found that several employees accessed the TikTok data of at least two U.S. journalists and a small number of other people connected to them, according to internal emails obtained by The Verge that were first reported by the New York Times. The access data includes the reporter's IP addresses, which were used to see if they had been physically near TikTok employees who were suspected of leaking information to the press. Read more at The Verge. Apple sued over stalking AirTags. Apple's AirTags can be a great boon. The tiny Bluetooth trackers have saved a disorganized driver or gadget owner from disaster by revealing the location of keys, phones, or luggage. But, although the U.S. lawsuit is unlikely to succeed, it highlights a growing problem. Two American women say they decided, say the devices have led to them being stalked and harassed and have launched a class action lawsuit against Apple. The company has failed to protect their privacy by geolocating them, they say, and carried out fraudulent marketing claiming the products are safe. Read the whole story at Cyber News. Fin7 Cybercrime Syndicate emerges as a major player in ransomware landscape. More than 8,147 victims have been compromised by the financially motivated adversary across the world, with a majority of the entities located in the U.S. Other prominent countries include China, Germany, Canada, Italy, and the U.K. Fin7's intrusion techniques over the years have further diversified beyond traditional social engineering to include infected USB drives, software supply chain compromise, and the use of stolen credentials purchased from underground markets. Read the whole story at The Hacker News. Two new security flaws reported in Ghost CMS blogging software. Security researchers have detailed two security flaws in the JavaScript-based blogging platform known as Ghost, one of which could be abused to elevate privileges by especially crafted HTTP requests. Ghosts in an open-source blogging platform that's used in more than 52,600 live websites, most of them located in the U.S., UK, Germany, China, France, Canada, and India. Tracked as CVE 2022-41654, CVSS score 9.6. 
The authentication bypass vulnerability allows unprivileged users to make unauthorized modification to newsletter settings. Read more at The Hacker News. The FBI says you need to use an ad blocker. The Federal Bureau of Investigation took a break from hunting serial killers this week to post a public service announcement. If you're not using an ad blocker, what are you doing? According to the Internet Crime Complaint Center, criminals are using ads in search engine results like Google and Bing to impersonate brands. These ads sent unsuspecting users off to phony websites that look identical to the pages people are searching for, where they are then being subjected to ransomware or phishing attacks. The Bureau says an ad blocker can help. Read the whole story at Gizmodo. Congress members demand answers about FBI's facial recognition tech. Three members of Congress have sent a public letter to FBI Director Christopher Wray asking for clarity about the Bureau's use of facial recognition technology. The letter is primarily concerned with privacy issues, but also asks for information about the accuracy of the FBI's facial recognition technology in light of studies that have found racial disparities in the performance of facial recognition systems. The letter is signed by Rep. Ted Liu, Rep. Yvette Clark, and Senator John Ossoff. To learn more, see Find Biometrics. This week's must-read on the Avast blog. Read Avast's top article on What Does Your Apple Watch Know About You? with some insights into things you might not know you're sharing. Read the article at the link listed. Did you know Jingle Bells was the first song played in space? If you gave all the gifts listed in the 12 days of Christmas, it would equal 364 presents and the cost would be $197,071.09. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was originally created as an advertising gimmick. My thanks go to Dave Graveline of intotomorrow.com for many of these did-you-know tidbits. I just thought you wanted to know. And that wraps up this week's Avast Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, have a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday, and a healthy 2023. See you next week. Bye-bye. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, Huey, are you ready to roll? Yeah, I'm going to do a follow-up to uh, uh, Bob's stuff. Mm -hmm. uh about security with uh this video and i gotta fishing at its finest i'm yui poplock of course fishing is never fine but i got a phishing email this week that's probably one of the best i've seen they almost got me on this one here is the actual email that i got and i'm going to divide it up so you can see both halves and see how realistic it looks. It became immediately suspicious to me because it came to my Gmail account and not to the account that my PayPal uses. I opened up my PayPal account and lo and behold there was that same charge waiting for my approval for $599.99. However at the top there was in red uh, a notice saying that it looks suspicious and to be careful do i want to uh, approve it because the same notice was in my paypal account that i signed into i called the 888 number and the fellow that answered the phone said i had to fill out a form to cancel that and he was going to give me instructions on how to sign in to get to that form by going to a website and he slowly talked me through opening up my browser and going to the URL and typing in a URL that ended with a .us and didn't have the name PayPal in it at all. And so I refused to do that and hung up. The PayPal website tells me to forward the message that I received to them 
and gave me an address of phishing at paypal.com and then delete the original message, which I did. And as soon as I did, I got this response. I then went to a website that I've talked about before, gethuman.com, and typed in PayPal and clicked search. After hitting a couple buttons and then saying that I wanted to speak to a representative, I actually got a human being to answer the phone at PayPal. The PayPal representative had me click on the word detail that was right under the price of $599.99. And when I clicked on detail, one of the things was to cancel. She said, just click cancel and it will be canceled. As you see here, it got canceled. So I didn't need to go to a separate page and give information that would have compromised my account. The bad guys certainly have a way to make it look tempting and real. Be careful when you get letters, when you look at websites and so on. They're all out to get you and get your money. I'm Huey Poplock. Be careful with phishing emails. Wow, that's uh, that was scary. Yep. Is okay, somebody... when, it, when, it, when it showed up on my PayPal account, that really worried me. Yeah. I, I have a follow-up to that, as you know, from the email I sent yes. out. I had the exact same thing, different company, but the exact same scam. <clears throat> the only difference was that I immediately called PayPal, right. which is the advice that I should pass to everyone. Never, ever act on anything within an email. If you think it might be genuine from outside, contact the company. Never do it from anything within the email. And yeah. just like with Huey, I canceled that payment, and that was the end of it. I have not gotten anything again since. But what scared me is when I went to the PayPal uh, account, it was there. That's correct. It That's, was for me, too. Yeah. And right. I had to do the same thing as yeah. you did yeah. at the yeah. advice of PayPal. Cancel it. I also sent them a copy of that email. So okay, so hold on, Kathleen. We'll we'll get to your question at the in the Q and A, okay? Because we can't spend a lot of time on this because we have a, a tight schedule. We have our experts who've given we're, they're ready to give us their predictions for twenty twenty three. I should say, don't don't take any of what they say and buy stocks or make any financial <laughs> commitments on what these people say. So we'll find out if they're any good. So uh, the first we'll start, of course, with Huey. And I'm going to play what he said for the last couple of years. And you can either give him the raspberry or you can tell him, or here's, here's what he said uh, over the last two years. So I'm going to give you the, you can decide uh, what. Uh, <clears throat> because I, I think Microsoft is going to introduce by sub, Windows by subscription. In other words, it's going to be cloud-based. I've read some articles about it. I've listened to some discussions about it. I think it's going to happen. It's going to happen either first or second quarter of 2021. Uh, I think working at home is also going to continue. Uh, some companies are starting to open up their offices. Uh, I know that uh, one of the radio personalities I listen to out of Orlando, he has been quarantined at home for 200 and some odd days. And next week they're sending him back into the studio. So I think, but there's still going to be a lot of people working from home. I think Zoom and other products are going to remain widely in use. And I think we're going to see more and more uh, other companies trying to compete with Zoom. And so we're going to see some other choices. Microsoft's uh, uh, Teams is becoming very popular, although to run a Teams uh, uh, presentation or meeting, is quite involved, but for for most of the people who join it, it's fairly easy to get on and you don't have to have a Microsoft account. Of course, working from home is going to continue, uh, especially since this uh, research, research, resurgence. Uh, I think, uh, and the Starlink is going to continue to grow and probably grow rapidly. And actually, as uh, uh, I connected this morning, uh, Elon Musk was doing a live 
presentation was going it was talking about some of the things where Starlink and, and other ventures he's involved in are going. So I'm gonna to have to go back and review that. But I think you're gonna see Starlink really come come out and be a lot more uh, uh, available. I think user groups are going to continue with Zoom and hybrid meetings. But uh, a couple other things. I think there's gonna be more breaches and more spam from telemarketers. But I think, and this is my prediction, I think there's gonna be a breakthrough in stopping spam robocalls. But it's going to end up being very controversial and uh, whether or not people accept it, uh, whatever this new uh, uh, revelation is to, to stop it, uh, it may involve a lot of us uh, uh, having to decide whether we want to give up our privacy again. And then I think also the uh, uh, IoT, the Internet of Things, is going to continue to grow. We're going to start seeing the Internet involved with all kinds of gizmos, gadgets, and everyday uh, electronics that we uh, have. And I think my final one is Windows 11. It's going to gain a percentage, but many people are still going to stick with Windows 10. And that's it for 20. All right. Uh, sort of motherhood and apple pie, Hugh. You didn't really come out with too many flyers on that. What's your predictions for 2023? All right. Well, just a couple. One is... Uh, and, and I think probably most of us uh, that are going to give predictions today are going to talk about AI, and it's just going to continue to gain usage with lots of apps happening because there, there's just a plethora of them coming out now. Some charge, some are free, but we're going to see a lot more of AI this year. Uh, the next item uh, is um, there's going to be more IoT, especially in automobiles. Uh, uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, usage of 5G built right into the uh, uh, in, into your cars. But to go along with that, I'm starting to see a lot of articles about the beginning of the end of AM radio. And uh, uh, some EV manufacturers have raised concerns even as far back as 2016 on how the battery power of an EV can interfere with AM radio signals. And so car makers are dropping AM radios uh, for many electric vehicle models due to electromagnet interference that disrupts the in, uh, receptions of AM signals, causing static. Uh, and this was reported in New York Times. Uh, already EVs from Audi, BMW, Porsche, Tels uh, Tesla, and, and Volvo are sold without AM radios. And it's been that way for years. However, Detroit's three, Ford, General Motors, and, and, uh, uh, and another one uh, have produced or currently make EVs that include AM radios, even on their flagship models. So AM, uh, AM's delays may be numbered regardless of an increasingly uh, connected world of 5G uh, cell service and satellite internet. So we may be seeing... Uh, the ending, uh, or at least a lot more talk about the ending of AM. I don't think we're going to see the ending of AM this next year. All right. Well, we're going to hold you to this because, you know, one year from now, we're going to play this back and see if you're right. Yep. All right. So uh, good predictions. Uh, that's that's and, and I didn't do too bad on some of the ones from the last nope, two years nope, either. No, nope. you were pretty, pretty right on there too. So we'll, uh, we'll see how things go. So you're doing, you're doing okay. All right. Let's see what, uh, let's see what Bob has to say. COVID related infections, uh, fake vaccination offered. You will have an increase in healthcare and pharma. Uh, they're probably going to have some changes in passwords and the way they are being used. It's simple. No matter how much you preach, they're never going to change. So you can expect more restrictions. You're going to have to start using your smartphone as some kind of secondary identification. Most of us already use two-factor authentication, or many of us do, but it's going to be more prevalent because the passwords alone don't work. There'll be other biometrics, facial recognition, uh, handwriting, all kinds of different things, fingerprints. 
deep fake, be careful. That's getting to be to a point you can't tell the difference between a fake and a real. And more and more people are going to fall for things that look so genuine because they are getting much better at fooling people. And as soon as you click on one of those things that you believe to be the real genuine article, now your problems are really going to start. That's just some of the things, but expect an, another increase, especially because more people are now home, more people are using their smart devices, and the more of us use it, the more money the crooks can make when they get into our information. We're expected to continue to increase, right? and it's gonna hit more platforms. Uh, you think you're safe on your Apple device, that won't be that way for long. The more popular things get, the more, uh, they'll get hit by ransomware and other infections. There's also going to be an increase in infrastructure, getting hit, healthcare, and the um, ransomware will also start hitting individuals more frequently. They've concentrated pretty much just on companies last year, expect that to increase for people. Phishing is going to increase. They're getting better at looking like the genuine article, so more and more people will be fooled. And a little more personal, the Norton and the Vast merger that's around the corner, the second half of 2022, you're still going to have separate brands continue just as they are now they'll probably get some uh, uh norton will gain something from a vast and the vast will gain something from norton but i think you're pretty much going to keep the brands that you currently have we'll see how that pans out because i don't have a clue on that either but we'll see <laughs> okay bob well you did pretty good i think uh you're you're right on track there what have you got for us for 2023 where gonna get worse oh no oh no, yeah unfortunately they're already ramping up uh cyber criminals will get better at their craft and last but not least there's lots of stuff now happening in ai that will also be picked up by the bad guys so if you think they were good before and they fooled people that's going to ramp up during the next year. AI in general will get, uh, get a whole lot better. And it's already to a point where I know I'm using AI for some things because it does a better job to give me an initial uh, starting point. And then I can just expand on it on and make it my own. But that's part of what AI is. Artificial intelligence will help humans become better. All right. I think those are wise, uh, wise comments. Bob, the uh, vast uh, merger, anything um, that's about the same? Any, any that's, change? It has, it has finalized. Right. Still and the products as, are separate. And the products, as I said last year, are separate and yes there is something that's already being uh done that's been part of norton life, life lock there's now a product coming out for avast that is on the line of life lock mm -hmm. so yeah okay. you're going to see things going into norton from avast and things from norton going in Norton going to Avast and things from Avast going into Norton, but mm -hmm. brands will be separate. Mm -hmm. All the brands are still there. Hmm. Okay, very interesting. Thanks, uh, thanks, Bob. Uh, let's now let's where's that? Where did Ray? There's Ray. <laughs> Ray, let's see what Ray has to say. Let me uh, let me just share this and we'll. Where do we go from here in 2021? Well, COVID-19 has affected the music business as much as any other industry, maybe more. Consider today, there are no large-scale in-person music concerts in stadiums and arenas. 
Small venues and clubs that provide musical entertainment are closed. Studio recording is limited. Those out of work will not be spending limited funds on music-related activities. This is a meaningful impact as musical artists in recent years have garnered most of their income not from the physical sale of recorded music or even streaming and downloads, but from in-person concerts, which also includes the selling, selling of things like clothing and other types of um, merchandise. So here's my prediction. Prediction number one, concert live streaming to grow. Concert live streaming is when an artist does a live show where there are no or very few fans in attendance. Often these are done from the performer's home, so expenses are kept to a minimum. An example of this new phenomena is the upcoming T-Mobile Presents NYE Live with Justin Bieber, set to broadcast live on New Year's Eve with two rebroadcasts re during the next two days. The nose for a person Bieber kind of past will be easily over $100 each. But this live streaming concert is only $25. In fact, T-Mobile customers have free access. So lesser known performers can also gain money from these types of broadcasts using such innovative concepts as a tip jar. Prediction number two, music streaming will continue to expand. Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and others continue to expand their streaming portfolios as more users sign on to their services. Streaming has surprisingly decreased music piracy as consumers find it more advantageous to pay $10 monthly than spend the time trying to copy low quality sounding songs from the internet. Streaming services continue to offer more offline features, eliminating the necessity of having a constant internet connection. Servers now provide in-home use of their music offerings. As an example, Sirius XM subscribers that receive music in the car can now obtain a free download of this app to hear music in the home. And prediction number three, HD vinyl records to emerge. So the Recording Industry Association of America reports that this past year, 2020, records, vinyl records will have outsold CDs for the first time since 1986. Think about it. those of us who can remember back in the mid 80s, how uh, when CDs came in, vinyl records would be gone. Well, in fact, vinyl records are still here and CDs may soon be gone. Record sales accounted for 232 million of music sales in the first six months of 2020, while CDs brought in only about 130 million. So there's a new process in manufacturing vinyl records that has emerged, and this will make the creation procedure more digital related. So the outdated process from last century in making a vinyl record has improved to a fast and eco-friendly method of offering the best analog possible. So what do you think is going to change? What are your predictions for this okay. year? A little bit quicker. I think large screen monitors, and they, they've just started to come out, and I think they're going to be a big seller. These are ones that actually rotate. You can make them either, uh, either sideways or straight up and down, you know, portrait or landscape, and you can rotate them. And those are really going to be popular to people that have limited desk space or in a small area. One monitor large enough to really accommodate where you can have multiple screens open on the one monitor. Uh, I do think Windows PC sales will increase substantially. I don't think people are going to wait till 2025 to, to buy a new Windows 11 computer. I think uh, they're going to go out and, and buy them next year. So you're going to see that change. I also think that the chip shortage will be not eliminated, but it'll be close to being uh, compensated for by more and more American companies like Intel building facilities just focusing on on, re, on replacing the the chips and and I think that's great where we don't have as much reliance on on Asian countries uh, and with respect to music yes I think vinyl record sales they increased in uh, by seven percent <clears throat> from 2020 to 2021, and I think that will continue. Here's my prediction. I think the seven inch vinyl record will have a resurgence. <clears throat> 
It'll be a, uh, an EP, which means it'll be two songs on each side. It won't be the big hole in the middle. It'll be the regular spindle size. But I think that's going to be popular because they can put the nice sleeves on that as well. And turntables. I think you'll see more and more turntables that play a record sideways, not flat, but you can put your turntable on the wall and play it sideways. And this will be ideal for homes that are small homes and don't have a lot of space. So those are my predictions. Well, all right, Ray, what's, uh, what do you got for 2023? All right, well, as, as humans, we're all influenced uh, by others, certainly musicians and songwriters. Now, with the dramatic expansion, and we've talked about a little bit with AI technologies, this includes the creation of new songs that will open up for debate. On And let's look at our decades-old music yes. copywriting laws that refer to a person infringing copyright. So my prediction is this will be a focus in 2023 to make that law more attuned to AI writing. Uh, I think more attention is going to be focused on alternatives to electric vehicles. And now this will be geared not to the regular automobile purchaser, but to the trucking industry, as an example, where they're going to look for things like e-fuels. They are they're synthetic fuels that can replace gasoline and diesel, as well as the use of hydrogen powered vehicles, all meeting the goal of lower emissions, but not having the extremely heavy weight of the batteries that need are needed to propel a truck. And now the first house I ever purchased was in Levittown, New York, uh, built right after World War II for the homecoming soldiers. It was built on potato fields and skeptics said this was gonna be a complete failure, that nobody's gonna buy these manufactured houses that are coming online so, so quickly. Well, uh, today a Levitt house sells for about $650,000. Uh, Casa Grande, Arizona, that's about halfway between Tucson and Phoenix. They are now building 3D printed homes. Yes, 3D printed homes. The roof and foundation are traditional, but all the interior walls are 3D printed and the insulation has a very high R value to work against the, the excessive heat, heat that is in Arizona. Uh, they take about six weeks to build. They range from 1,600 to 1,900 square feet and it cost under $300,000, perfect for the for the first time home buyer. So I think these will catch on and we'll be living with 3D printed homes for the for years to come. Wow, very interesting. I agree with you. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, we're going to we're going to hold you to this. We're going to play this again in another year and see if you're right. All right. Well, good good thoughts. Uh Bill, we're going to move on to Bill James and uh we're going to look and see what Bill said last year. Let me just share the uh, share the um, screen. Uh, Bill, you have five minutes and that's it. I know you've got a whole page of predictions, but you only get five minutes. So we're oh, I think I can handle that. Uh, five minutes is all you get. So we don't have any. Pre you didn't you didn't tell us last year. So uh, tell us this year what you think. Well, you know, since my uh, interest is gadgets, the thing I I, I think we should watch is electric cars. I think uh, with the um, uh, Tesla's getting more competition and with the launch of uh, Ford and Mercedes and Rolls Royce getting into the fray, uh, that uh, these cars are going to become more commonplace. I think the, um, uh, the, the range is, is going to no longer be an issue as well as places to charge them. And the two vehicles I think we need to really watch is the Ford F-150 Lightning and the Lucid Air. Uh, and there's also a third pickup that's called the Rivian RT1. Uh, the Lucid Air and the uh, the Rivian truck both uh, garnered uh, Motor Trends vehicles of the year this year for 22. The other thing uh, is the Tesla cyber, uh, cyber truck. I don't think that that's going to make uh, 2022. It was uh, slated to, uh, be in production by 2021. It's got um, delayed, and so I, I think we'll. It'll be another year before that shows on the horizon. And another surprising thing that Tesla is doing is the Tesla smartphone. Uh, that was a surprise, and I think uh, we should watch that. It's going to be tied with um, a lot of the um, 
Elon Musk ecosystem, um, the um, um, car, and uh, it's going to be uh, controlled with that as long as, uh, among other things, as well as Starlink. It's supposed to be powered by Starlink, as a matter of fact. And then uh, there is the um, conglomeration that is going to be looking at trying to make um, the Internet of Things all compatible. It's called Matter. We'll probably see more uh, devices with that logo on it. So that means that when you buy a, um, a smart uh, device with the Matter logo, it should work seamlessly with your other devices. I think. Um, Microsoft is going to uh, con continue its uh, focus on cloud. Um, they're um, building their, um, they want to, they're the number two um, public cloud provider at the moment. And I think they're really striving to become number one. Um, I agree with Huey on the foldable uh, phone. And uh, someone to watch for is Apple supposed to be introducing its iPhone uh, 14 flip. So that means it's going to get, uh, we're going to see probably uh, foldable phones becoming more affordable as more people, uh, our companies get involved with. And lastly, the probably most ridiculous thing that happened in uh, uh, 2021, and we want to see if it will uh, actually flourish in 22, is the LG foldable TV. It comes, came about at an astronomical $90,000. And something that's funny that I read that Tom, uh, who produces Tom Sky, he said this. It says, perhaps LG will learn lessons from this fancy TV that will make it cheaper in the future or help other products get better or even open up possibilities for entirely new categories in the coming years. There's a bit of less, there's a lot of lessons that can be learned from bleeding edge technology. But the bigger lesson, I think, TV manufacturers, and this also pertains to others as well, will have to learn the hard way that uh, six figure prices aren't remotely realistic. All right. Uh, some, some, some predictions came true and some didn't, Bill. What uh, what do you think? Unmute yourself. Bill, Bill, Bill you got to unmute yourself. Bill is muted. Okay. I was trying to get my script up. I don't have that many predictions. Uh, um, this time around, but like everyone else mentioned, uh, AI altered uh, um, artificial intelligence, but also um, alternate reality is another one that we should watch. And I, I was um, noting that a lot of online shopping is going to be uh, using that technology uh, to uh, sell their products. Kohl's has something they call a virtual closet. And uh, Best Buy uses a AR, AR app to uh, where you can actually um, show where you want to place your TV. So we're going to see a lot more of that uh, coming uh, come in place where you can actually uh, visualize where a product you have, where you want to place it by just using your phone and um, pointing it to the area uh, where you are considering placing the appliance or the uh, piece of furniture. And I think that's going to be coming uh, very commonplace on a lot of websites. And again, I believe that electric vehicles will continue to make strides uh, with most major automakers' goals uh, of having a total, uh, at least uh, uh, three or four electric vehicles in their lineup by uh, 2024. 20, uh, <clears throat> um, and I think this also, we're going to see uh, the batteries are really going to be uh, take a forefront. I think Ron mentioned uh, about the battery plant that's in Canada, but I think we're really going to see some um, some strides in battery production and, and maybe innovation because the batteries are really the Achilles heels uh, of most uh, electric cars. 
but a lot of them have really um, increased their um, their um, their range. And the other um, uh, problem that we have, of course, is um, having the charging stations. Uh, Electrified America is all over the place, but I keep reading about there's monumental failures uh, at a lot of these uh, charging stations where they don't always work. And so there are some issues with them, but uh, they really need to get that right for people to be more um, uh, trustworthy, uh, uh, trusting in uh, being able to travel and having a, a charging station available to them. And the other thing I think is that Bitcoin will continue to fall out of favor due to the scandals. We already know that uh, it, there's going to be uh, less uh, interest in that. <clears throat> At one time, it was thought to be uh, the end all uh, for uh, having cyber currency. But I think that's going to uh, fall out of favor because it almost seems to be a giant Ponzi scheme. And, uh, but I think we need to uh, just watch that and see what happens. But those are my predictions for uh, 2023. Thanks, Bill. Well, we're going to hold you to it. I got it. You're, you're on the recorder. <laughs> we take uh-huh. it. So we're we're going to play it back next year. Uh, Mike, um, have you got some, some words of wisdom? Well, Bill stole a lot of my thunder. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, I agree with him. Okay. Especially in the area of batteries and, and their capabilities. And uh, there are a lot of new technologies. So my first prediction is going to be an alternative to the lithium ion battery will be developed and in production by the end of 2023. We shall see. Um. In my research, I found that there is a video put out on YouTube, which is on my playlist. It's the playlist link is in the uh, Saturday newsletter and we can send it out again. They said that 25 brand new EV models will be available to be purchased in 2023. Among those, one, two, three, four, four of them will come from new manufacturers that have not been selling cars before. One is called the Canoe. It's gonna be a new pickup truck. One is called the Faraday Future. Uh, Fisker Ocean is already in production, so they've started their deliveries. And VinFast is a Vietnamese company. Now, who would have thought a major manufacturer would develop, produce, and market cars from Vietnam? So those will all penetrate the market. Um, Ron mentioned during our pre-discussion uh, uh, for the show that new plants are being built in Canada for both batteries and automotive. So I'll extend that forecast to say in the United States, Canada, and Mexico, new EV companies will be either establishing or have established automotive production plants so they meet the new uh, U.S. income tax incentives by the Inflation Reduction Act of January 1st. I will also expand that to say that many automotive buyers won't be able to take advantage of them due to the requirements that, first of all, final production must be 100% in North America, and a percentage of the batteries must be sourced from North America sources, and there are income requirements. Many of the automobiles are at the high end and high prices, and it requires the people buying them do not have income that exceeds certain limits. And many of them do have income that exceeds certain limits in order to be able to afford them. Um, From Newsweek, they came out with their predictions for vehicle production in 2023. And they said, despite all these plants coming in and all the gains being made with production, that supply chain issues will keep automotive production back in 2023. So it's, it's, as Ron was said, said earlier, you know, is, is supply chain going to actually be improved in 2023? I'll go out on a limb and say no, and that's gonna be a major stumbling block. And finally, we're going to see auto, auto, new automobiles, whether they're electric or they are internal combustion, 
are going to have more of their functionality, which is computer controlled and enabled by internet on subscription. We, I, I found out that Chrysler, Ford, and GM see billions in annual revenue from subscriptions like navigation systems that come with a basic capability, but real-time updates, horsepower boosts, hands-free driving systems, and other features will be enabled by you paying a monthly subscription price. And that's gonna be a, a major source of income. And I'll add my own personal, looking at my background, you see a Fisker Ocean, and I will say that in 2023, I will not be offered the opportunity to take my $250 deposit and convert it into an order because I'm too far down the list. I'm somewhere in the range of 65,000 on the waiting list, but we will see. Thanks, Mike. Uh, good, good, good predictions. Uh, we'll see, uh, see how they pan out. They said we recorded this and we're gonna play it back next year and see if you're right. And, and maybe I'll have my new EV by then. Uh, I'm going to give three predictions. Um, I'm going to, to, keep, <clears throat> to keep this short. I want to talk. Uh, and Ray, we'll do your outro at the top of the hour, okay? Uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just finish off with my outro. My, my predictions. My predictions for 2023 have to do with three companies, uh, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. Uh, so my prediction with Microsoft is this. Uh, I agree with what Huey said two years ago. I suspect we have known for a long time, there's many articles written about Microsoft. They're not making any money on Windows. Uh, Windows doesn't cost, when they're not making a dime on it. In fact, they're losing money. And Microsoft is not a benevolent society or a benevolent company. Uh, I expect this year it will be clearer as to what's going to happen with Windows. Uh, whether it's a subscription fee or whether there will be advertising, I think that I think my take on this is it's a ridiculous thing to have two Windows 10 and Windows 11 parallel for so long. So maybe Windows 10 will be um, an ad subscribed uh, service and Windows 11 will be a paid service. I don't know, but I think I think it'll be more clear in 2023. I think I think the whole Windows Microsoft thing will surface. And what Huey said two years ago. So it'll it'll be clear as to what the vision will be. The second is Google. Um, I think Google has lost their way. I don't know where it's going. Um, there have been a number of reports this year that Google, uh, the board of management is not happy with Sindar Pichai. And uh, this was evident by, of course, a massive cut of a quarter of all their products and services and, and staff this year. Big, big slice. They cut programs such as very popular programs, such as the uh, Pixel Book and all the Pixel services they had to, with their, their Chromebook series. Um, and I think that was probably maybe came from the board of directors rather than Sindar Pichai. So I, I expect changes at Google this year, and I expect that we may see a management change and more direction as to where things are going. So watch carefully for Google. I think there's going to be some, some big changes there. I think the biggest change will occur in Amazon. I think that uh, the whole concept of what Amazon is doing, uh, as you know, um, the IoT division of Amazon, all the Echo Show products and all the IoT devices uh, are not making one single dime. They have put out billions and billions of dollars, sold a, a ton of this stuff, as has Apple and Google, and not anyone has made a dime of profit on this. They're not making any money. So uh, where is this all going to go? Uh, I expect uh, Amazon will, um, the Amazon Prime prices, will, your membership will go up substantially this year. There have been a lot of uh, increased costs associated with Amazon and transportation. I expect you're going to get sticker shock when you find out how much your Amazon Prime uh, costs will be. Whether they roll as an added feature to your Prime account uh, the IoT software and some of the services that they offer through IoT into your Prime account. Somehow they've got to change this IoT thing so they're going to make some money. Look towards big changes at Amazon this year. So those are my three predictions, Amazon, um, Microsoft, and Google. Big changes is coming for these three companies this year. So I stuck my neck out on a line. We'll see what happens in a year's time. All right, uh, Ray. Are you ready to take it away? Before uh, yes. before you do that, just want to say goodbye to our friends over on YouTube. Uh, if you want to come over and participate in the Q&A, uh, I'm happy to, uh, to do that. 
Uh, and if you uh, otherwise, uh, don't forget this Thursday, we'll have Tech for Senior Live and we'll see you again uh, next week for the big opening of our 2023 season. And Mike uh, Ungerman will be talking, of course, about uh, batteries and EV cars next week. Who writes the songs? Barry Manilow. Now, Barry was born as Barry Allen Pincus in Brooklyn, New York, June 1943. And he began playing the piano and the accordion. Yes, the accordion used to be very popular back then at the age of seven. After high school, he was accepted into the prestigious Juilliard School of Music. To help pay the bills, he worked in the CBS mailroom. Now, and he worked his way up, and over the next several years, he supported himself by writing and performing advertising jingles. Most of us would likely remember if we heard them today. Corporations such as State Farm Insurance, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and McDonald's. Now, his next step forward was becoming the musical director for Bette Midler. And that ultimately led to his own recording contract with Bell Records and his first album released in 1973. The record label asked Manilow to record a slightly up-tempo song titled Brandy, which had been a hit in the UK for Scott English. Instead, Marilow made the song into a ballad, changed the title to Mandy, and thus became one of his biggest all-time sellers. Now, in the 1970s, Barry Manilow was a pop music icon. He dominated the airwaves with tunes that included I Write the Songs, Looks Like We Made It, in Copacabana. Achievements continued when in 1977 he won an Emmy for his first primetime special on ABC with continued new broadcasts over the next several years. Now, even when the public's musical taste changed, he continued to have success by branching into swing, pop standards, and Broadway show tunes. Into the 21st century, he continued to have album success, including his most recent 2017 release, This Is My Town, Songs of New York. Now, beginning with his appearance on American Bandstand in 1975, a business as well as friendship relationship between Manilow, Manilow and Dick Clark began. And thus, there were numerous appearances by Manilow on Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve over a several-year period where today's song was typically featured. It's just another New Year's Eve. And let me be the first to wish everyone a happy new year. Perfect. Perfect. And Mary Manilow will be in year. Tampa in two weeks. Yes. So thanks. Thanks, Ray. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, well done as usual. So uh, happy new year, of course, to everyone. We'll have a short uh, period now where we have a Q&A. Just to remind everybody that uh, the uh, Tech for Senior Live will be on this Thursday. The usual gang will be there. We'll be talking about... Um, uh, I, get, I haven't decided what we're going to talk about yet, but we're going to talk about <laughs> something, and uh, we'll we'll do that for sure on Thursday. Uh, I guess it'll be uh, next year when we see you for our first show, which of course will happen next Monday, as Mike uh, will be uh, leading with that in uh, EV cars. If you have any questions or concerns or about anything we've talked about, uh, or you have your own prediction, just put your hand up, and we will. Uh, We'll get on with that. So, uh, Neil, do you have a prediction or a concern or a comment? What's uh... I've got a couple of comments and a question. All right. Huey, I am grieving AM -A radio. And then I got to thinking it has been years and years since I tuned into AM. Uh, I listen to it a lot. Uh, however, uh, it, it's become harder and harder, but I do listen to it. Uh, through my Miss A uh, at home, uh, mm -hmm. some of the uh, some of the uh, morning news shows, uh, either out of Orlando or Tampa, uh, are pretty good, and I enjoy listening to them static-free uh, by streaming them. Mm -hmm. 
Well, mine, mine have been FM almost totally, both in automobile or at home, uh, and then satellite. The other other comment was uh, 3D printing. We have a company in Austin that is doing that, and we have a whole development here in Georgetown that are 3D printing homes. And my only, and again, I'm grieving. I'm not going to be old enough, uh, young enough to ever get into one. <laughs> there, yeah, it's very interesting, I, isn't it? Yeah. I remember my first house we bought, it was $6,000, not sixty or 600000 6000 exactly, yeah. Jim, uh, do you have comments, questions? Uh, what, what's, your, what's your thought? I have a question for those of you out there who are, like me, hard of hearing. Um, I finally got a set of those uh, bone conduction Bluetooth hearing earphones. Mm -hmm. I just love it. And I was wondering, does anybody know if they make hearing aids with those type of um, attachments instead of sticking it in your ear with the bone conduction? All I've been able to find is surgery. Um. Good question, uh, and one in which we might just have to do some more research on, Jim, and maybe even um, a show about it. We'll see if we can get an audiologist on or some talk about the, some interesting new developments in hearing. It's a good question. Um, let's let's use that topic for 2023, and we'll do some research on that. How's that for that, Jim? Sounds good. I'm, I'm going to continue my research because I really need it. All right. But I Yesterday was fun. We were at my family's, uh, my kids' house for Christmas. Yeah. And I've been using the earphones, and they were so comfortable, I forgot to take them off. And I was getting <laughs> all these weird stares. What are these things on your head? <laughs> all right. Thanks, Jim. Um, speaking of a couple of speaking of a couple of visionaries, of course, uh, we have geeks on tour. Uh, we have uh, Jim and Chris Gould here. They are uh, the visionaries of the vision. So are you going to provide us with some, some thoughts for 2023? Well, first of all, ha uh, happy, happy new year. No, Chris just wanted to disagree with Bill James about his, <laughs> his Bitcoin, Bitcoin <laughs> oh. and, and not to conflate the idea of the, the different what is it? The Coinbase and the FTXs and exchanges, and the exchanges, yeah. and the yeah, the, the idea that cyber currency is definitely not going away. Definitely not going away. And if anything, the bankruptcy of FTX, I think, will prompt Congress to in to come up with some regulations of the crypto companies. Bitcoin itself is what it is. Problem. The, the problem is total fraud on the part of the Bitcoin companies. If we get some regulation for that, then people will trust it more and it'll go sky high. Secondly, <laughs> well, no, not sky, no. And that has nothing to do with no. I, I do not agree with it as an investment, but I have no doubt that the future of money is digital. And if you, from an American point of view, it's hard to understand but if you lived in argentina right now you love the idea of of bitcoin and i had one a second thing uh, just uh, a tech for senior thing i think you should call your seniors your thursday show tech for senior chat because this is live you know what's the difference between this and your thursday thursday is four guys chatting <laughs> just that's true that's true we could have done that originally sense. Yeah, yeah, she's good at telling people what they should do. <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know, trying to rebrand something and all the all the links and all that—I mean, it would be a massive job. Oh, what that. else do you have to do? You're yeah. <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, listen. Um, Thank you. Okay, Chris. Any any other sort of pearls for 2023? You can you I give us any insights into Google you? poses nah. or something? No, your 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 um, your mum's the word on that. No, I was I was listening with with rapt attention to y'all y'all, okay. and had some agreements and had some 
Thoughts? Disagreements. Okay. But you Very but good. you get me thinking. Maybe maybe I maybe I will come up with something for our upcoming newsletter. <laughs> okay. Right. There you go. There you go. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks a lot, Steve. Go ahead. You know, I'm just wondering about uh, batteries. Is it possible that a battery during cold weather can be drained so much that it is dead completely that it can't be recharged at all? You ask the question, is it possible? The answer, is it possible? Yes. The key is, is what our company's doing to try to prevent that from happening. And also the countries that are Northern climates like Norway, for example, Norway is becoming a very big uh, consumer of EVs and they certainly have cold weather that they've got to, you know, winterize, if you will, EVs. So the, so the problem is, 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 is the solution is there now, Mike, it's just, it's going to get better as we move up, move ahead. I, th I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. To Dorothy, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Dorothy, un unmute yourself. I need a new desktop. Should I get it this week? between now and next Saturday, or should I wait till the next week for the best <laughs> price? <laughs> well, it's a good question. I mean, there's certainly lots of sales. Uh, have a look around. I mean, it's uh, uh, Boxing Day sales and crazy, crazy things are going on. Um, uh, have a look at Best Buy today. You know, they've got all sorts of sales on there. You, do you have a Best Buy in your area? I do not shop at Best Buy. Uh, I haven't looked at Dell's online site. Look, have a look. No, in I, sh I shop at Staples. Yeah, go. Staples probably has a lot of big sales on there. Um, you know, I would um, for sure. I, you mentioned a PC. My uh, for sure, I would recommend if, if you're not going to travel or move the thing, um, get a PC. I think you're right. You know, don't don't buy the battery in the laptop if you don't need it. So stay away from well, the battery. I'm on a laptop right now. I have a laptop. I also right. have an Apple. I'm multilingual, yep. um, <laughs> but I, my desktop is di has died. Died. Sure. Good. And, good thoughts. And, and, and I didn't realize how old it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's certainly uh, certainly lots of sales. So have a look around. Have a look at Staples and see what uh, well, see what they have. What do you guys say? Buy it this week before New Year's or the week after New Year's for the best prices. I'm, I'm three quarters, Scott. I agree. Monday would have been the right time to buy it, but yeah, when? Cyber Monday, Cyber which Monday, is gone. Yeah. yeah, you know there was there was Black Friday, and then there was Cyber Monday, and Cyber Monday is traditionally when you buy laptops and desktops. I didn't know it died. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference, nope. really. I think the sales are there now, and you know, see what you think. But I think you'll be fine. I mean, it's not going to make over fifty dollars anyway. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. But have a either look at way, Staples. Either way, you're going to kick yourself because if you buy it now, you find a sale later, you'll be mad. Oh. And if you buy it later and you find out, gee, I could have gotten it. So it doesn't matter. Just buy it when you need it. And let us know what you get, Dorothy. Let us know what the, what you get and, and and how you're doing with it. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a good old German saying, "Mock mix." It doesn't matter which way. <laughs> Diane, go ahead. Hi. I just wanted to brag. I got my ear pods. Ah. Okay. So there they are. Aren't they cute? I, am I the only person that you know? I'm not just an Apple nut. I love Windows. I love Google. I love everything, tech. So, but I just get so excited over these little Apple boxes and how yeah, neat everything great. is packed. <laughs> you know, all these little. I just love these boxes. I mean, am I the only one that keeps the boxes? Anyway, I got my ear pods. I love them. Right. And um, I have this new little thing that I ordered from Amazon and I have a question, but maybe some of you already have it, but it charges my phone. It's not just that. This is not Apple. It charges my phone. It charges right. my watch or the Fitbit up here. And then you put the ear pods here. Everything mm -hmm. is magnetized. And this has a little blue light that goes around it that you can turn off and on for a night light. 
anyway, and you plug it in. I just love it. It's my newest little charger. So everything charges at once. Yeah. That's good. Up. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, it's it's all good. Anyway, the, uh, that's all. Yeah. Santa Dan, was we, good we, to me. Santa was yeah. good to me. I got a new computer too. I haven't set it up. Okay. Nice. Yeah. We, uh, Diane, we, we always uh, try to include, we're, we're cognizant of the fact that, that there are a lot of Apple people that probably are even listening to this show. And we, we okay. haven't found yet, this is Huey and I and everyone on our board is trying hard to find someone that would contribute to uh, some, some form of Apple information, even a regular series on the show. But we haven't found anyone yet, so we're we're, I know, we're looking. I, look around. I I wish I was more proficient in it. I, I used to teach at the college years ago, but I gave all that up. I'm retired again. So, <laughs> but yeah, I wish I was more proficient on that. I I would love to be involved with that. Yes. Okay. Huey, one final comment before we got to leave. Yeah, I was I was at uh, my uh, Christmas dinner yesterday, and uh, uh, my. Uh, well, uh, uh, Robin's sister's uh, daughter had a mini Polaroid camera that she just got. Yeah, and I it saw fits those, in her yeah. back pocket. Yeah, I and saw uh, uh, it, it's the newest thing. She just loves it. And she's in that uh, uh, just out of uh, uh, teenage years, your early 20s. And uh, right. she she's in love with it. So uh, uh, right. interesting that you can get, get uh, it's. Uh, what we grew up with, with the instant picture, right. uh, she has one. My yeah, daughter has one, and she takes it with her everywhere. It's, it's amazing how good the pictures come out, and it's a little bitty thing. Yeah. And Murray, you did, take... you have a, did you have something you wanted to show us? Yeah, I have a, my new computer. Oh, well, what's that? Uh, it's an Innovata Quadra. Is is that like a Nook? Is that like a Nook? No, no. This is a full blown computer. Okay, cool. I mean, it, it runs Linux, but it's a full blown computer. Full blown, right, cool. Carried around in the palm of your hand. Yeah, I think they're about thirty nine dollars US. <laughs> Thanks, Murray. All right, we have to go. Thank you so much for coming today. It's the link. Can you put up the link again for the uh, ex ex premiere? Yeah, and I'll now. put it right in there now. Hold on. And then we'll get going. And, and we will. Doing um, that, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. And thanks for being with us this year. And we yep. hope you're going to stick with us next year. Yes, we do. We do. And we'll see you uh, for our first show of the new year in another week. And we'll also be talking on Thursday to Thursday uh, at Tech for Senior live, chat. maybe chat. <laughs> maybe we'll call it chat. <laughs> live chat. Live, live chat. chat. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Bye now. Bye, everybody. Happy, happy, happy New Year. New Year.